Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to save and load user settings in your Microsoft Access database. We'll set up a settings table and you can save and load any settings you want. For example, this is going to be part 55 of my fitness database. Now, whether or not you care about fitness and tracking calories and all that, that's not the point. The fitness database series is something I'm building for myself so I can teach you guys all kinds of cool Microsoft Access tips and tricks. And one of the things I need to save is what is my daily calorie goal or my protein goal. So I'm going to save those as numbers in a settings table and I can look them up other places in the database. And that's what the user settings table is for. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. The name of the computer, the username, the window position, you, you name it. Should you watch the rest of the series, parts 1 through 54 first? Yeah, absolutely. There's tons of great tips and tricks in there. Do you have to? No, not really. This one kind of stands alone. So here we go. All right, in today's video, we're going to start tracking our daily goals. Now, for me, I track calories and protein. Obviously, for whatever you're tracking, if you're tracking sodium or cholesterol or fat or whatever that stuff, I'm going to do, like we've always been doing with this database series, my protein and my calories. Now, the first thing is we need to place to store our goal values. All right. For me, it's 2000 calories a day is what I try to eat. Um, and my protein is 200 grams of protein. So I need some place to store that stuff. Now for the members in the extended cuts, we have this thing called the settings table where we've got all kinds of other settings in here. For example, oh, here's the new, um, the new pop-up clock we did in one of the extended cuts, right? If you're coming in here, you want to change this time, double click, boom, you get a pop-up clock. You can make it, you know, 8, uh, 8.55 p.m., whatever, right? So I'm going to put that back to 9 o'clock, <laughs> 9 a.m. So all those settings for that clock are saved in here in the settings table, right? We also have our window positions. So when we open up the database, it goes to this position on our screen and, and stuff like that. So we're going to use this table. All right, so I'm going to instruct you on how to setting this up on how to setting this up. <laughs> I'm going to instruct you on how to setting this up in a few minutes. I've covered them for the members, and I also did a tech help on this a few years ago. Here's the video. Now, I've made some modifications. This video is three years old. I've made some changes to the code over the last three years, but this video will explain to you generally what we're doing. We're creating a settings T, and this one I called it default T, but now I call it setting T. Um, the ID is really meaningless, but you got a name of the setting and then the value, right? So you've got, you know, the computer name is Picard. Your daily protein is 200, that kind of thing. And then you can look them up throughout your database. So go watch this video if you want to see roughly what's covered. Members, of course, gold members. It's also in the, uh, the code vault. The newest code is in here, but you've seen this already for the previous uh, extended cut video. So this is nothing new to you. In fact, the members version has some additional code in here that uh, can tell you if the table exists when the database starts, and if not, it will create it for you. I'm not going to show you all that code. That's stuff for the members. So this way, when you start your database, if the settings table doesn't exist, it'll create it for you, and then you can even put your initial settings into it. But that's uh, that's members. That's members only stuff. But you guys, non-members, you'll have to set this up yourself. It's not that big of a deal. Create a setting T, right? I have a setting ID, which is an auto number, which we really don't use, but it's, it's just a good idea to have it. Uh, the setting name, which is short text. That's the name of the setting itself, like first name, last name, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, daily protein goal. And then the setting value, and that's long text. And I set it as long text, even though you're setting numbers whenever, and that way it can store any type of value. It can store a date, it can store a memo, it can store a number, it can store whatever. You just store it in a long text field. Um, is that super efficient? No, but this is a table that's not expected to get a lot of traffic, right? You're not gonna be storing 100,000 records in here. You're gonna be storing maybe a, a tops, like 100 of just database settings and preferences. So you're not going to be doing a ton of reading and writing to this guy. In fact, one thing I thought of members is that the setting name, we don't by default index it. We don't have to index it because again, you're not going to be constantly looking up stuff from this table, but it wouldn't hurt to index it. You know, in case you do have, yeah, you got a couple thousand settings in here, maybe, but not, not necessary. So this is what you got to have your settings T save that. And then in here, we're going to add two new settings. Okay, we're going to put in here daily K 
calorie goal, and for me, that's 2,000. You can set in whatever your number is. And then daily protein goal, and again, for me, that's 200 grams of protein. So those are the two settings that I want. You can set yours up. Uh, these figures are based on a whole ton of different statistics. Your current height, weight, age, daily activity. Um, I have a, a, a smart scale that I, it tells me what my BMR is, my basal metabolic rate. We've talked about this before. Mine's about 2450. So I need 2,450 calories every day just to exist. You know, my organs, my brain. Well, my brain burns probably a few thousand calories. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. So any exercise you do on top of that is just is just uh, cake on top. Well, not really cake. You don't want to eat, add cake when you're on a diet. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's my goal number is to hit 2,000. All right, so save that, close it. Now we need a place to, uh, we need functions to be able to read and write uh, these uh, values. Now, in the global module for the members at least, yeah, I put them in the global module instead of the member module, there's a member module too, but I put it in the global module because I knew we'd be eventually having to make these public. So, where are they? Here they are, they're coming up, let's see here. Oh, there they are, put setting and get setting. Okay, now I'm gonna go over them just briefly in a moment. Um, but I strongly suggest you type these in instead of just screen capturing it, no CR or whatever, because, um, you'll learn more by typing this stuff in and trying to understand it yourself. I remember when I was a kid, um, I used to get, I used to have my, my Tandy color computer, my Coco, right? And I'd type in programs that were in the, the book. And, I, and I've learned a lot by that. When I was you know, learning computers, we didn't have an internet where we could just copy and paste code. I got magazines or bought books from the store and typed in the code myself. And by typing it in, your brain tends to analyze it a little better than just if you copied and pasted off of some website. So even though you can screen capture that and OCR it, I strongly recommend you don't. Type it in, you'll get more out of it. All right, now put setting. This is when you're putting data to the table, okay? You send it the setting name and the setting value. And I'm sending it as a variant because this way it can accept null values. You might want to null something and you can't send it in if it's a string. By val means that these cannot change the originals. It's sending it in just as a copy of the data. Okay, on error resume next. I know I don't always recommend it, but for functions like these, if it encounters an error, you just want it to exit out. You can check on the other end to make sure that something was actually read or not by looking at the value. We're trimming whatever comes in, okay? SV is just a holder variable for the setting value. Uh, I'm, I'm casting it into a string value inside here. And that's another reason for the on error resume next. If it comes in with a null, it just skips over it. Rather than try to look up to see whether or not the value exists and then either adding it or editing it, editing it I just delete it either way. So we're gonna just delete the setting. If it's in the table, it deletes it. If it's not, it doesn't. So it just executes that line either way. Then we're gonna add it new with a record set. And then that's it when we exit out. All right, and get setting is the other way. Get setting reads the value with a simple D lookup. That's that setting name. Okay, so there's the code, type it in. And now you're ready to get and put values. Now, yes, I realize at this point that some of you are gonna say, well, there's a couple issues with doing it this way. First of all, I did mention early on in the series that we might make this multi-user, might make this multi-user, depending, we'll see. Um, that's one of my goals. But if we do it multi-user, we will obviously need to have multiple users daily goals because not everybody's are gonna be the same. So we might move this to a separate table. But for now, I'm not worried about that. I just want to get this functioning as it is. Another consideration is that as you lose weight, these numbers will change, right? As I as I drop from 295 to say 250, my BMR might come down to like 2100. So I need less calories every day to survive. So this data will change as you uh, as your body composition changes. Likewise, the number of grams of protein that I need will change. And it'll also change once I get down to my goal weight, I plan to add some muscle, so I'll need to increase that value. Now, right now, I'm just caring about this for daily planning. I really just wanna see, like, today, how many calories do I have left? How many more grams of protein do I have to eat? I'm not too worried about last month. But you might, in the future, decide you wanna track all that. And if that's the case, 
then we'll have to store those daily calorie goals and protein goals in a table so we can have historical information. It's kind of like with order entry systems, right? One of the things I teach in my developer course is storing historical data when it comes to product prices. You know what this particular computer costs today, right? But what did it cost a year ago when you sold it to customer Z? You got to store that pricing information in their order. It'd be the same thing here. Every day, we need to actually store this goal data in a, either in this table or in some other table. I don't really want to store it in this table, but it's a possibility. You could do that when you create a new day, have it pop in the goal values in here. And then, but that's, that's kind of honky. I'd probably set up a separate uh, daily goal log table. But again, you know, we might add that in the future, might not. For now, all I care about is just seeing down here, hey, how about today? How did I do yesterday? Maybe the day before. But I'm not really at this point too much concerned about what I did last month. All right, so now that we got all that set, we are ready to put the data here on the form and we'll get to that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. You know how it goes. And members can watch it right now because I'm gonna record it in just a few minutes. So that's gonna do it for your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part 56. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.